All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order the JPS meeting of March 15th. Chair Renahan, um, before I do roll call, I guess I'm gonna, I see member Garcia is here and she has request, been uh, requested to allow remote participation under 7A of the OMA due to uh, personal illness. And do I have a motion to include so her in moved. today's meeting? Virtually, all right, we have a motion, we have a second, all in favor? Any opposed? That is approved. Uh, roll call now, please. Thanks. Chair Ranahan? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Covert? Member Dessart? Member Eckhoff? Here. Member Garcia? Here. Member Kajewski? Here. Member Ozog? Here. Member Pachalski? Here. Member Schwarzy? Here. Member Selman? Here. Member Zay? Hmm. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. <clears throat> All right. Um, thank you. As you might have noticed, um, I, I, I know we don't have a member Schwarzenegger here, but we have started um, with the closed captioning today. <clears throat> so I'm just going to remind everyone. Um, so it's going to be an interesting ride with the closed captioning, but I'm um, just remind everyone um, if you have read on, you are going to be closed captioned. And I think it's best to turn off your mic when you're finished with your official comments. So uh, with that, good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to hear from Homeland Security and Emergency Management Director Craig Diekman on a two-page election security. And in these times, it is important to dialogue on security. Elections are the very heart of our democracy, yet we have seen increased misinformation campaigns and an exponent, exponential number of threats on governmental and election officials nationally. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has already issued a warning that the midterm elections could be a rallying point for domestic extremists, sparked by unproven claims of election fraud. We have seen a proliferation of state and federal resources committed to election safety. The Illinois State Board of Elections has a statewide terrorism and intelligence center. I spoke with them yesterday about some of their concerns. They distribute regular bulletins, to educate officials about threats to individuals and voting systems. Last year, the US Department of Justice launched a task force to specifically address threats against election workers, administrators, officials, and others associated with the election process. This is in addition to its cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency. Seeing as though the county is responsible for running elections, we must consider the state of our employees' welfare. One's continued interest in working in this field or even serving as election judge. Who will administer elections when reports indicate nationally that many are leaving election departments? Um, I've, did, are the handouts on the desk? Okay. So I've included on, on your desk, um, just an example of one, uh, the CISA National Security Agency to give you a flavor of the concerns and the precautions that they are suggesting. So there's also an undeniable county financial impact in protecting public safety during elections from upgrading campus security as this committee continues to address uh, to protecting and upgrading IT. And then there's the question of what if no insurance carriers think it is safe enough to cover polling places? And I quote from our insurance broker because we do not ha yet have a new carrier, quote, placing coverage for political events has become increasingly difficult due to the increased political tensions in the nation, specifically the events that occurred on January 6, 2021. Because of that, many carriers have decided to exit the market space for special event coverage for polling places, including your previous carrier. So with that, I'd just like to thank you all for your attention today. Um, this is a, a serious issue and uh, the info I have heard from security sources is, it's just important for all of us as elected officials to know that words matter. And we owe a special care duty to the facts I personally believe it's our, our obligation to call out misinformation because integrity does matter. And I know one thing we're all re re very relieved to hear yesterday, we got a press relief, thanks to the hard work of law enforcement and our state's attorney. The person who allegedly made threats against state rep Conroy was charged. And maybe state, state's attorney Berlin said it best in his press release of yesterday, for government to function properly, public officials must be allowed to perform their jobs without having to worry about retribution or fear for their personal safety. 
So I, I, I appreciate your patience with my comments this morning. And with that, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of March 1st, 2022. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any additions, questions, comments, anything? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. That is approved. <clears throat> Moving on to procurement. I'll entertain a motion to approve JPSP 92-22 recommendation for approval for a contract purchase order to Flock Safety for purchase, lease, installation, support, and training of hardware software, 35 cameras for automatic license plate detection for the sheriff, March 22nd, 2022 through March 21st, 2025, not to exceed $222,500. We have a motion in a second. Yes, uh, Vice Chair Pachowski. I have a question. I know a lot of municipalities have asked about this. Uh, we will be entering into intergovernmental agreements, so those municipalities where these are located have access to that information as well. So we have Chief Torp. Uh, come on up to the microphone, please. We want to see your closed captioning. Yes, we've had uh, multiple meetings with all the agencies uh, involved in the county. We will share our information with anybody that would like to have it. All the other agencies indicated to us that they're going to do the same, and that's all through through the uh, the vendor. Will they get the same training that our officers get on this? Because I know I, I, they're, they're in a secured location, correct? These boxes are mounted somewhere, and that's how it's read. And they would have the same access and uh, training that everyone else will be getting or not? The, the training will be the same. Uh, the, the poles are individually mounted. They're solar-powered. Um, we're per cur currently going through the permit process to get all, all of ours located. And then through the server of the agency, through Flock, that's how all the departments can sign off to share the information. When do we think that will happen? The installation? Yeah. Uh, hopefully by the end of April, we should have all of them in place. I know our contract is with Flock. What's Exxon? What's their relationship? What are they doing regarding this specific contract? They have... Uh, some sort of a corporate agreement, but there's a, a, a part called evidence.com that we use to download our information with our body cameras. And they use that same, that same um, service for the, the uh, license plate readers. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Member Krajewski. Thank you. Um, I know we helped uh, fund or we funded the money for these cameras. Yes. Um, and I think in order to get a, I guess a net over the whole county, we need to integrate these with all the other municipalities. I think Downers, Westmont, down by me, if all got cameras or getting them, Elmhurst, I think uses a different system. Um, my question is, do we need to allocate money to you um, to help in the coordination of kind of integrating all of these um, municipalities that have cameras, some in different systems? Um, you know, we just allocated the money, I think it was over three years to get the cameras. Uh, do we need to give you guys some money to I guess, integrate them all together? Or is there a plan to integrate them together? Or do we need to come up with a plan, you come back to us and say, it's gonna cost us this to integrate everybody? Because I think we need to get every municipality and the county pretty much on top, integrating all these uh, camera systems together to give everybody access to data, et cetera. The way the contracts are written is that um, we have the ability to basically go on their server and check a box that says we will share with whatever other municipalities want to share with us. So that's all handled through Flock. So there should be no need to tie them all together. It's all done through the contract that we have with Flock. Flock can go to Elmhurst and use a different system. And you guys well, if there's with different systems, now you're talking technology that, that I know is currently being worked on because like anything else, some parent companies are buying up these different systems uh, and then coming up with ways to integrate. As of right now, I'm not, a, I know they're in the works, but they're not in place. I don't know where that would have a cost to us at this point that I can anticipate. <clears throat> if you want to put some money aside for us, I can always find a way to spend it. No, no I just I specifically wanted to do it for integration. For if, just if, that though, I, I would, that would be nice, but I don't, I could not give you a definitive okay. time right now that that would actually be necessary. Okay. So I guess if the technology comes out and there's the ability to integrate and there's something with that, we come back to us and let us know Absolutely. and let us know the cost. Thank you. And that's one of the reasons you wanted to go with Flock too, because it was so widespread within the county. Currently, right now, I, I'm just off the top of my head. I'd say 75% of the agencies that have cameras are using Flock. Okay, great. Any other questions or comments on this item? Thank you, Chief Dorbert. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's approved. Take a motion to approve JPSP 9322, recommendation for approval of contract to Trinity Services Group to provide inmate and officer meals at the jail. May 1st, 2022 through April 30th, 2023, not to exceed $584,182.50 for the sheriff. Is there a motion? Do I have a second? Second. 
Thank you. Uh, questions, comments here? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's approved. I'll take a motion on FIR 126-22, Resolution Additional Appropriation for Neutral Site Custody Exchange Fund, $47,370. Motion, second. Questions, comments, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. That's approved. I'll take a motion to combine items seven, B, C, D, and E. Um, these are all IGAs with townships with the sheriff. We have a motion and need a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. I'll take a motion to approve JPSR 127-22 resolution IGA with York Township with the sheriff, $130,678.63. These are all April 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2023. Uh, motion on JPSR 128-22, resolution IGA with Wayne Township for Police Services, $130,678.63, same date. Uh, JPSR 129-22, resolution IGA with Bloomingdale Township for Police Services, again, $130,678.63, same date. And uh, JPSR 13022, resolution IGA with Milton Township for Police Services. This is for $392,035.90, April 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2023. We have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any questions or comments? Yes, Member Rosa. I'm curious about why the uh, Milton Township seems to be almost three times as much as the other ones. Well, Milton Township has three patrols and most of the others have just one. All right, thank you. Thank you, Member, Member, Member Eckhoff. Um, any other questions or comments on these items? Can you clarify who moved? I had Zay for a second. Zay for a move, then who's the second? Thank you. All right, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, those pass. I'll take a motion on 8A, budget transfer of funds for contingency automotive equipment. Um, from contingency for purchase of a seized vehicle for the sheriff's office, uh, $15,000. We had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll take a motion on uh, 8B budget transfer. This is uh, from employer IMRF and software licenses and maintenance agreements to cover uh, Adobe Network, $1,330 for the probation court service. We had a motion. We have a second. Okay. Here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll take a motion on 8C, budget transfers. This is from regular salaries and operating to operating supplies, $170 for the library. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I take a motion on change order 9A, uh, amendment to resolution JPSP 10-20. For a contract issued to Allied Universal Security Services to provide security services so for moved. OHSCM, increasing the contract by $75,819.85. We have a motion and second. Questions or comments on this item? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Take a motion to receive and place on file public defenders February 2022 a statistical report. Motion. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's received and placed on file. And I will take a motion to receive and place on file the FY 2022 strategic initiatives for our Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. In a motion, second, Member Solomon, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, that's approved. So moving on to our presentations, I'd like to welcome our new Homeland Security and Emergency Management support, our director, Craig Diekman, to the podium here. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Renahan, members of the County Board. The purpose of today's briefing is to share with you eight ways in which the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management is supporting the 2022 primary and general elections in DuPage County. Next slide, please. So first we start with continuity of operations. Uh, in both uh, in 2018, one of the DuPage County polling places lost electricity in the middle of the day, working with other county departments, facilities management, and others. Um, OHSCM coordinated the delivery of a generator and a county electrician responded to get the polling place back up. 
Um, as soon as we arrived or shortly thereafter, power was restored by ComEd, but uh, measures were in place to continue um, services uh, after dark. Also in 2018, 2020, and again this year, OHSEM sets up a uh, temporary uh, call center at another location so that if phones were interrupted at 421, uh, the election division help desk could continue to operate from another location, which is some, a simple redirection of the phone line. What you see in the bottom of, oh, actually all four of those images are three cases that are kept by our office, which have 20 phones, just like the ones throughout the county campus. As long as we have a connection to the county network, those can be unpacked in 15 minutes and the call center is ready to go. And we use those uh, not just for the election, but to support emergency operations when we activate the County Emergency Operations Center. Next slide, please. Next, we have our mass notification system. This is a system that OHSEM uses during Emergency Operations Center, or I'll call it the EOC from now on, EOC activations. In the election years, we program the system so that uh, we program it, we add about uh, 250 to 400 phones from the election division. Those are some of the phones you see there. We program the system so that it can be used for the election division to notify all of its polling places simultaneously by voice or text. And it has been used to send informational messages in the past. Next slide. Number three is our cyber incident response plan, OHSCM with County IT using guidance from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, Texas A&M University, TEKS, and other subject matter experts developed a cyber incident response plan, which the county uses not only for elections, but for everyday operations. In the event of a cyber event, county IT and OHSCM would operate a unified command structure as we do for other emergencies. County IT's primary role would be similar to a fire department, it identify the source of the cyber incident, eliminate the problem and recover systems while OHSEM handled notification, mutual aid with our state and federal partners and cost recovery. Next slide, please. Number four is information sharing. So in 2018 and 2020, and again, as we'll do this year, in the months before and on election days, OHSEM maintains continuous and open dialogue with federal and state partners. This includes intelligence briefings um, that are already underway and have been underway for months and will continue, and uh, meetings with various organizations to ensure a safe and accurate election. One platform that we use, again, not just for election, but all the time, is the Homeland Security and Information Network, or HISN. It's a reliable and secure place operated by the United States government for web conferencing, document sharing, chat rooms, and so on. We also use services of the Elections Infrastructure Information Sharing and Analysis, Analysis Center, or EIISAC, on an ongoing basis. We get bulletins every day. County IT gets bulletins from EIISAC, as well as other information organizations, and measures are taken all the time to keep our county network secure. This continues on election day. We stand this up at five in the morning. We run until about 10 at night or whenever the clerk's office tells us that's no longer needed and we are monitoring information throughout the day. Something may happen in another state that's posted in this room and happens in a second state posted in the room that might appear as two independent one-off incidents, but when taken collectively can be early symptoms of a coordinated attack. I work with IT on those days and I'm constantly sending the information securely to county IT of things that are being seen around the country on various networks so they can take measures to secure the network. And again, this is happening now and it happens on election day. We do this again, not only for elections, we do this during periods of civil unrest and other times we open up this room, county law enforcement, fire and EMS partners are all invited to the room and we're sharing information in real time. It was particularly helpful during the civil unrest of 2020. Next slide. As Chair Anahan mentioned, uh, misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation is an ongoing um, concern, not only with elections, but with international uh, matters that we're seeing right now uh, with COVID-19 and with other things. To that end, uh, misinformation is simply a mistake. If I said the election is the first Wednesday in December, but I was simply mistaken, that's misinformation, no harm intended, I was just wrong. If I say 
Polling places will be open until 9 p.m. because there was a problem with the DuPage County election. And somebody was having their dinner and figured, well, I'll just finish dinner and go vote at eight. They show up at the polling place, the polling place is closed. That's voter suppression, that's disinformation. The intent is to do harm, to take away somebody's opportunity to cast a vote. Malinformation is correct information, but used out of context, right? To that end, DHS Department of Homeland Security and CISA created a website titled Shields Up. The um, web address is on your slides and in your packet. Shields Up was released a few weeks ago. It has an abundance of resources, tools, white papers, fact sheets um, that you can, that anybody can research. It's an open, unclassified site and it addresses all of this, misinformation, disinformation, cybersecurity, ransomware, and so on. It's being heavily promoted. Again, it's open, it's in the public domain. And um, anyone who would like to uh, browse that certainly can. So there's more information there than we certainly have time for this morning. Next slide, please. Number six, there are additional security facilities and training projects with which OHSCM and county departments are involved to protect the integrity of the election process. This committee and the full county board have previously discussed these activities and we can do so again if you wish in a future executive session. Number seven, next slide. So the Emergency Operations Center is activated for primary and general elections. Uh, in the past, it's operated at a virtual level. We have a few people on standby and as I've already described, are working throughout the day with information sharing and being ready to help if there's an incident uh, at a polling place or where continuity of operations needs to be engaged. For this coming election, both on the primary in June and the general in November, the EOC will be fully activated. Uh, vacations have been suspended on that day and we will be ready to assist in any way that we're asked. For any other time, the OHSCM duty officer is always available 24-7, 365. Wendy, Joe, should I wait or? No, okay, thank you. And then number eight, lastly, is a tabletop exercise. Um, working with the election division, county IT and other county departments, OHSCM is designing a tabletop exercise for late spring during which stakeholders will test plans for dealing with election related cyber events, continuity of operations incidents and disinformation rumor control. A tabletop exercise is a discussion based exercise where various scenarios are tossed out and all the players discuss, okay, I'll do this or I'll do that. To use the disinformation example where somebody tweeted that uh, polls were open till 9 p.m. then the election division would go to its website or rumor control page and post accurate information to correct the, the uh, uh, in that case, disinformation, all right? And again, the timing of that exercise will be so that there's sufficient time between the exercise and the primary for us to update plans and uh, procedures so that they're all set before June 28th. And those are the eight steps that we're helping, the eight ways we're helping. And of course, we're always here. I have been meeting frequently with the clerk and her staff and facilities and Mr. McPherson and IT, and we work together on this. If there are, unless there are any questions, that's all I have. Uh, I'd like to open up to the board for questions. Uh, Member Zay. Thank you. I haven't heard anything new besides Shields Up. This is something we normally do during elections. I heard 2018, 2020. This is, so this is nothing out of the ordinary. We're doing what we've always done in the past. Are you referring to the, at the federal level, sir, or locally? No, I'm referring to what we do here in DuPage County. Most of what I just described, we've done in the last uh, in 2018 and 2020. Okay. Shields Up is a new website that uh, the uh, CISA had put out a few months ago to help aggregate all of the resources because clearly cyber is one of the top threats right now, not just with elections, but in general, we're seeing that with the, uh, uh, what's going on in Eastern Europe right now, cyber is a huge threat. Right, but we're monitoring that every day, just not election day, we're monitoring that oh, every day of the week. 
Absolutely, sir. I, I literally get dozens and dozens of intelligence briefings per week, and I'm not the only one. County IT gets many of those as well. Most of these you need to be vetted for, but we get briefed at both the classified and unclassified levels. And then we take action as we can appropriately with the people who need to know the information. And before you do anything, I'm just confused. This is the clerk's responsibility. So the clerk would tell you to, or ask you, I guess, to do something, right? Absolutely, I mean, sir. Okay. Just as in, a, in the civil unrest, we yield to law enforcement. We were there to support and we were. And on a, a major fire, such as the recent Bartlett fire, we were actively engaged. Uh, with that, supporting the Bartlett Fire Department, but it was Chief Gabrenia's um, briefing to provide. We're just, we're happy to be in the background as a support group. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, Member Oza. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, going back to uh, our chair's initial remarks, should um, an elected official receive some kind of threat, be it social media, phone, et cetera, What's the best procedure to follow? Uh, is there a, a chain of reporting an incident like this? There is, generally speaking. It depends on the threat and if they're credible threats, but in those matters, that's a law enforcement matter. Um, so if we get information, we, we share it with our partners all the time. Uh, we would look at the jurisdiction having authority. Is it unincorporated? Is it the sheriff? Is it the state police? Is it uh, local law enforcement in a community? And we would share the information if we got it first. Sometimes they share it with us. So we all have a common operating picture. But we yield to law enforcement on matters of, of threats. So for instance, if, if an elect official got a report of some kind of threat at home, let's say a, a computer uh, correspondence or something, calling the local, your local law enforcement, start there and, and then carry on. Uh, absolutely. And, okay. and with the recent matters that were discussed, I was in contact with local law enforcement, uh, as well as the sheriff's office, and we were all on the same page, but we yield to them for um, law enforcement matters. I have one other question, if that's, that's all right, right. Uh, in a separate matter. Um, is there, how do you report mis, mal, disinformation? What would be the best response? We would start, to use my example again, with getting the information to the election division, that this we're aware of this tweet, here's, an, here's the tweet, show it to them so that they can put out accurate information right away. We can't afford a delay because in that example, somebody extended polling by two hours when that's not true. So you wanna make sure it gets corrected so people have an opportunity to get out and cast their vote. If it's, um, there are, there's a whole reporting structure in our cyber plan, depending on the type of incident and what's happening, whether we call FBI, do we call local law enforcement, do we call, uh, Chair Renahan mentioned the STIC, the Statewide Terrorism Intelligence Center. Um, there are a numerous uh, agencies that could be notified depending on the incident and the urgency of it. Thank you. Thank you. I remember Chapel. Thank you, Chair Renahan. <clears throat> Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, my question is, we talked a lot about the general and primary days, but I would assume that these same protocols are in place for early voting. Um, do all the election officials have the phones as well? And you guys can send out texts to them at the early voting locations as well. Do, do the same procedures being used? Specifically regarding the, the hundreds of phones, I would have to defer to the election division. I work, I support uh, Mr. McKay on that matter. But as far as everything else, uh, on information and intelligence briefings, those have been underway for months. The, the state has dedicated personnel on this and I work with them. We work with the state elections board. We get information all year long. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments here? Oh, I see member Garcia. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair Renahan. Uh, just, just, I wanted to just thank you for your presentation today. This has been fantastic. Uh, and I really appreciated the uh, the uh, explanations of the disinformation versus the malinformation versus you know um, misinformation uh, because that makes it very clear to me exactly you know what exactly the intent was for when things are being spread incorrectly um, and, and where we can go from there. So I really do appreciate that, and I feel like you know you really got a good handle, and I feel really good that you know you're helping the clerk's office during a really 
very, very uh, busy time with the elections. And so I just wanted to say that I appreciate all the work that your, your department is doing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Member Garcia. Any other questions, comments? Also, um, yeah, thank you. Important thank you. topic, a great presentation. Thank you very much. And also uh, thank you to our IT, our clerk, um, Chief Briggs, you know, everybody that keeps us safe here on campus. So much appreciated. Um, moving on to old business. Do we have any old business? Um, do we have any new business? Um, I do have a bit of new business. I understand uh, that something went out, uh, a press release went out from the coroner releasing 2021 numbers on deaths, including opioid deaths, suicides, breakdowns. I know it's something we're all interested in. Um, he's certainly welcome to address this committee at any time, um, but uh, Jason's gonna be sending this to the committee so we can all have a chance to take a look at it. Um, any other new business? All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, we're adjourned.